So, uh, uh, hello. So, I'm Shigo from Japan. So, I designed uh, Arduino Fear so six years ago uh, in collaboration with Spectrum. So, I'm really happy to see many projects so utilizing the board so far. So, and strongly believe that open source hardware is an effective concept like you. So today, so to develop discussion on opportunities and challenges of open source hardware, so I would like to introduce the Hackberry project. It's a, a little bit more complicated and sophisticated project, so including mechanical parts, so by Genta, oh, where? Oh, yeah, so Genta and his team. So Genta, uh, could you please introduce uh, uh, your vision and your project? Okay, hello. I'm Genta from Ixi Inc. Um, I've been working on this um, open source 3D printable bionic hand. Uh, bionic hand is uh, kind of a robotic hand for people who lost their hand or who doesn't have their hand from birth. Um, so uh, first, I would like to um, uh, show you what kind of world I want to make using these um, images. So. Um, 3D printing is not only to reduce the cost of manufacturing, uh, but it's also to um, make it easier for people to make things um, as cooking a meal. So I, I imagine that in a few years' time frame, uh, a girl for a missing hand can make her original hand together with her mom just by you know um, looking through the catalog on the internet. And um, also adding some kind of heart mark so she can arrange it and um, have like her really original hand. So that's my vision on the 3D printing part. And um, also open sourcing. Um, open source is not only to spread our data to the world, um, not only to like make many um, many of copies. But, um, I was. Another uh, objective of open sourcing is to integrate lots of um, partial technology. Because uh, I know that um, in many labs around the world, they are working day and night to improve their kind of patented technology. But uh, most of the time, it's really difficult for them to um, combine them all to make one bionic hand. So um, since I have this simple platform, it, it, there's, no, um, there's not much the technology inside it, it's just the integration of it. So um, each lab, if they come up with a um, new idea, they can just add on to this platform. So um, that's what I see for the um, 3D printing and um, uh, open source uh, ultimately. So um, let me briefly give a technical explanation how bionic hand works. So um, let's take a look at unimpaired person first. So um, when you move your hand, uh, if you don't mind, you can do it together with me. So when you open and close your hand, first thing that happens is the, um, the image of the motion. So it, it arrives in the brain first, and then it goes through the uh, motor neuron and um, some stimuli, electrical stimuli uh, contracts the muscle. And finally, this muscle um, will um, move the joints. So like this, this is the um, precise process of um, when you move the hand. And um, for people who lost it or who doesn't have it, they don't have their hand, but they still have the muscle unless they're paralyzed. So what bionic hand does is to um, you know, collect the muscle signal artificially and converts it to the uh, motion of robotic hand. So um, I'll uh, quickly show the demo. So he here's the sensor I have, and this sensor is uh, going to um, collect my muscle activity. Like even if I lose my hand, I still have this arm part. And like this, uh, I'm actually contracting my arm. And um, this contraction is sensed, and um, it is um, sent to the robotic hand so that I can um, control this robotic hand pretty intuitively. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'll be do, doing demo later, so if you want to try, just um, stop by and ask me. So, uh, but um, what I want to um, emphasize here is the hand is not only for physical functionality. Um, another uh, yet important part of the hand is expression, I think. So um, imagine your hobby or your favorite pastime. 
uh, even if it's like sports or music or even like playing video games, the hand plays the central role. Um, so um, this expression is what I really want to focus on this Hackberry project. And um, this movie is, uh-oh, uh, let me see. So um, this guy actually lost his right hand by a uh, factory accident three years ago. And on the left hand side, um, that, that hand was the first hand he got from the doctor. Uh, it has a physical function to open and close, but its appearance is kind of miserable. And people around him kind of hesitated to um, talk with him about the hand. Uh, but um, on the right hand side, it is our earlier prototype called um, Handy Coyote. Um, since we put up focus um, design a lot, um, it, it's the same physical function to open and close, but people around him um, can easily um, and uh, positively uh, ask him what happened. And uh, like, like this kind of kids also get interested and they're they first afraid, but like after a few seconds, they um, start to uh, shake hands and um, please look at their smiley face. So um, I, uh, I think this will be kind of proof that um, uh, the prosthetic hand or bionic hand is not to you know, hide or conceal or compensate the missing piece of the hand, but it's rather um, to express their uh, personality. So um, here's another example. Um, this lady is a singer, and you can see that she is missing right hand. Um, she was born without a hand, which means she can basically do everything, every daily task by herself, but only thing she really wanted to do was to make a gestures on her live performance because um, she thought her musical expression was um, restricted even though she can hold a microphone by her natural um, left hand and um, sing a song beautifully. So um, what we did last year was to provide her with um, this hand and made um, her first live performance with gestures. Um, so um, I'll, what I want to um, mention here is that um, it, it's really niche use case I think. like not. Everybody missing a hand want to make a gestures, and not everybody is having a live performance. But um, it is one and only uh, dream she wanted to accomplish. Uh, so um, I think every person has like really unique story, and to fulfill all of them, I think this kind of um, framing is important. So. Um, it's not only the product, not only the um, universal product, which I can uh, mass produce and um, send it to everybody. Product is only the, um, the first layer. And uh, I think um, there should be community layer on top of it. And from those community, um, many unique personal stories can um, come out. So that's why I uh, started open, source, uh, open sourcing last May. It's been like one and a half year. Almost. Um, if you check our GitHub page, um, it is github.com xe slash hackberry. And um, you can find um, CD CAD data, SDL file, and um, also uh, PCB board, uh, Arduino sketch, and um, also build material. So everything is on the GitHub page. On top of that, we have um, a portal, xc-hackberry.com, where you can find um, forum and also um, tutorials, so which uh, makes you um, easier to start building it. And once you um, printed the body parts and um, prepare some electronic and mechanical parts, which is available around the world, you can um, uh, at least build a copy of this hand. And um, it's I guess it's been um, really successful so far. It's been spreading. Out um, around the world, um, of course, U.S., um, EU, and uh, many parts in Asia. Um, I'm gonna show one example of, of um, the potential of open source projects. So, this project um, is from Poland in uh, EU, not Portland, but for the Poland. Um, so basically, what um, he, they did was um, they made the um, kid size 
left hand version of this Hackberry hand. We only had right hand adult size version on our GitHub page first. But um, uh, one engineer um, customized it to uh, provide it to this boy. And um, he reduced the size to 70%. Um, since the sensor is still large for a um, five-year-old kid, so he has to wear the sensor on the right hand. So it, it's not completed yet, but at least this boy can know what it feels to have left hand. And um, I didn't ask him to make this neat movie, but um, he, this um, guy called Valtus understand our concept and he um, posted this YouTube, really nice YouTube video. Um, it, it's, the company is called V Bionic, V Bionic. I think um, they also um, started a company there, so um, if you're interested, please check the V Bionic uh, well page too. Um, speaking about community, I also um, think local community is important um, besides you know, um, open source community, which is virtual and spreading out globally. In local community, we can um, talk on face-to-face -face basis. And uh, yeah, so in Tokyo, Japan, I'm having a monthly meetup where um, people um, being involved to Bionic Hand can gather together, including um, amputee themselves, engineers, and also um, medical professionals like um, therapists, doctors, and there's some um, people called prosthesis who are uh, making the conventional uh, prosthetic hands. So um, this is a glimpse of our meetup on the left top picture, like all of them. Uh, there's almost 10 people there. They are all missing hand, but um, they're wearing our Hackberry hand together so they can have a user test in like really fun uh, atmosphere. Um, we're also sharing our talents so that um, engineer can show how to solder and processes can um, show how to make conventional um, prosthetic, especially the, the socket part, which you can you have to customize to each person, you know, shape and size is different. So um, we're, we're having this um, local community too. And um, from this community, we're, uh, well, um, we're doing um, Hackberry development in um, grassroots manner. So this boy um, in white and red shirt is missing right hand, and his limb is kind of short, so it's more difficult than um, usual to uh, attach the hand to his limb. So um, other guy, he's a prosthesis, is helping him. Uh, I mean, it's collaboration of them too, and um, they're trying to come up with um, like fixed socket which he can um, hold the hand for kind of whole day. And it, it's not only like in developing it. We I'm encouraging them to show the uh, process how they um, trial um, and error process. So um, um, in the monthly meetup, they're also um, having a presentation like that. So um, th this is what we're doing. And um, so talking about license, um, uh, we first did um, Creative Commons license, uh, BY and SA, but we changed. We added um, S. Uh, and see later, uh, and uh, also we changed the Arduino sketch license too. Um, it was uh, the reason was twofold. Um, first, uh, honestly speaking, we had to um, make money somehow to make this project sustainable. We have to pay ourselves too. Um, the other reason was that um, um, there have been people asking us that um, is it really okay to like make. Uh, start business with this data and also just people of who didn't want to share uh, their um, derivatives too. So um, we made it um, straightforward that uh, for, f as an open source, it has to be um, followed the, the rules. But um, we also prepared another way that um, we can um, have a contract individually customized for their uh, purpose. So. So uh, thank you very much. So it looks like so you achieved some positive goals. So by you know, choosing uh, open source as a strategy. So could you please share your lessons learned from the project? Um, so yeah, um, it well I only um, introduced the successful side, but um, there's um, lots of challenges too. So um, first, um, the the Poland case, the the uh, the kid size version one, um, it is not open source yet. Uh, it is because you know hardware requires lots of um, manual uh, procedures and um, 
having a complete Having a working model doesn't necessarily mean it is in digital format. It's, that's a huge difference from open source software, I think. So um, that, that's one challenge I'm facing now. Uh, the second challenge is that um, even though um, in our local community, uh, they're trying to make uh, the, the socket for a short, short limb boy, but um, it hasn't been completed yet. And since it's voluntary basis, um, I can uh, um, uh, see him to finish fast or like run fast. So uh, there have to be some, you know, good uh, rule in the ecosystem, and that kind of um, uh, design of the uh, the community should be also uh, open sourced. I think. And when, um, last but not least, um, after we changed the the license, many entity actually asked asked us that um, they want a customized license and they uh, want to start man, uh, mass productions. And we said yes, and um, I, I allowed them um, to do it in like really um, good deal, but um, it never happened. So um, even though we design, uh, keep designing the, um, the rules, um, it, it's still hard for hardware to get from the prototyping stage to the mass production stage. So. So uh, thank you very much. So and so uh, I have this very quick announcement. So uh, so I uh, supported the project with a lawyer so to designing the terms of use. So and so now the terms of use as a uh, and available as a template. So and kindly uh, the Open Hardware Summit uh, official account tweeted the link. Uh, so maybe you can find easily. So and maybe you can utilize that for your project. So and do you have any final remarks? Uh, okay, so um, yes, as a final remarks, I want to show this picture, um, which is our uh, my uh, one of my goal with the the um, the user. So the the guy who was shaking hand uh, in the very first movie, uh, he was in Johnny Paraglider before he lost his right hand by an accident three years ago. So um, our uh, personal goal is to uh, make him fly again one day. Uh, in a really cool manner, so yeah. thank you for listening.